All right, what's up guys? VV back with another video. And in today's video, you already see what we're getting into, guys. You can see it on the screen right now. We're getting into Z. Uh, that's right, OP02, Purple Black Z. But we're going to be checking it out with some new cards in there, guys. Because it's, it's got some new toys to play with. And uh, yeah, I think this is... This is one of those leaders I saw a long time ago and thought, man, it has so much potential. It just needs a little more support. And guys, I think we might be getting close to the support that it needs. I, th I think we're right there on the cusp of this of this leader breaking into like maybe the B or lower A tier. And you guys might be laughing at what I just said, but I think you'll see what I'm saying once we get into these games. I think you'll see what I'm saying. And and, and maybe not, guys, right? We're, we're doing this. This is a brainstorming style video, more of a thought exercise like, like you know, for deck builders to get together and talk about this new leader. Maybe something for you to bring to locals because it is a very, very fun leader to play, guys. Very fun. So, yeah, you guys, let me, let me give you a quick layout of what we're getting into today. First, we're going to check out a deck list from the East from OP07. Okay, so not even a long time ago, right? Not even that long ago. OP07 from the East, which is what we're about to be getting into in the West. All right, quick reminder there, Friday this week, at the time of me recording this video, will be the pre-release for probably a lot of local stores for One Piece, guys, for OP07. Okay, so we're going to check out a deck list from the East, then we're going to do five games on the Sim. And I'm, I, I can't remember exactly, but I think I have a list that's OP06.5, one list that's OP07, and one list that's OP08. That, that one's very exciting, I have to say. Okay, but then we're going to go from there. We'll check out those different deck lists at the, at, towards the end of the video, and then we'll wrap up with an art critique, okay, like we've been doing. So, um, so yeah, you guys know what you're getting into, guys. You, uh, you know what you're getting into. There will be a little bit of spoilers here and there, so, you know, I got, I got to warn about that. Uh, so, yeah, let's do this, guys. Let's hop into this. we got a lot to talk about today. So, Zephyr, or Z, this is an OP02 leader. I think I mentioned that already in the intro. Um, this is when the color black first got into the game. Okay, OP01 was the first, you know, set, right? OP02 was the second set where they introduced black into the game. And OP03 is where they introduced yellow into the game. So you have to imagine, back then, this leader saw quite a bit of play, but it was not super successful, because back then, black didn't have a lot of support in the card pool, because it was just, it was the brand new color, right? It's the new kid on the block. Um, but guys, since then, as we know, okay, as we know very well, black has gotten some very, very solid support. And guess who else has? purple okay and when we get to op08 i think it's going to become very obvious that it, that it has also gotten some very good support okay so let's go ahead and dive into this let me read what the leader it does the, what the what the leader effect does and then we'll uh, go from there so it's a 5,000 power four life leader very standard for a dual colored leader purple and black uh and this leader has when attacking dawn minus four ko up to one of your opponent's characters with a cost of three or less then this leader gains plus 1,000 power during this turn Whew, man. Okay, so um, that is that effect is very strong on a leader, but it comes at a very hefty price, right, of Dawn minus four. And one thing I want to mention real quick as well is, guys, think about real quick how Power Creep has entered into the game. Compare this effect to Red Purple Laws. And, like, and also consider how like I, I feel like those are backwards. I feel like the I feel like those effects are actually like they're they're backwards. Like you would think red black or excuse me, red purple would have this power increase effect, right? Where it's like then this leader gains plus one thousand power during this turn. That's like a, that's a red mechanic, I feel like. Like why why is that in a purple black leader's effect? You know, it's and, and, and one more thing I want to mention too before we go on is one thing that would help this leader get a little more, you know, I think would help t uh, tune this leader a little better and make it a little more balanced is if that plus 1,000 power lasted until the start of your next turn. But anyway, um, but think about it again, like for a second, that's a red effect. I'm surprised Law, and that would, I, I know people are probably thinking right now, man, that would have really balanced Law right there. Imagine if Law, being a red purple leader, had, you know, Dawn minus three like it has, activate main, bottom deck of 3,000 power or lower character, and then this character gets plus 1,000 power until the start of your next turn. So in other words, does not cheat out another character. That, that would have been massive, right? That would, have, that would have changed everything. But anyway, I just wanted to draw attention to that. Like, there's definitely been a little bit of power creep coming into the game because this effect is, yeah, it is when attacking versus Laws is uh, activate main. This is Dawn minus four. Laws is minus three. Um, this is a KO, a three or less. Laws KO. Uh, or a bottom deck, not even KO, excuse me, bottom deck, a 3,000 power or less, and then this leader gains plus 1,000, Law gets to cheat out a four-cost body for free. It, it's just wild. I feel like they had that this backwards. Like, I feel like they should have just almost like just swapped these leaders, you know what I mean? Just totally changed their, their abilities uh, or, or find a way to catch Z up. 
Okay, and, and that's one more thing I want to mention before we go into the, this first deck here, is I do wish they would do that. If there are leaders like Z and like Smoker, I, I talked about that in my Smoker video just recently, when it comes to Z, why can't they just print another one? Like, just print a brand new one. Like, hey, you can play this one if you want to, the old, um, you know, the old, like, worse version, but just print a brand new Purple Black Z with what I said. Like, maybe make it uh, 5,000 power, 4 life, activate main, dawn minus 3, KO a 3 or less, and this leader gets plus 1,000 power during uh, until the start of your next turn. Like, would that really be that insane? I don't know. Maybe it will be. Y'all tell me what y'all think in the comment section below, but let's just keep, please keep it respectful, guys, because I'm trying to... You know, I'm just trying to brainstorm. We're just theory crafting. We're, we're just getting our thoughts out there. Okay, so that's what the leader does. Very powerful effect. Very, very powerful effect, okay? But how do we capitalize on it? Because it, it comes at a hefty price. So this first list we're going to look at was a 4-0 first place list all the way back from uh, April 12th, okay? And one more thing I should say, too. I've done two other videos on Z from the past. I will link those in the comments section below. So for people who are interested in, in seeing how my thoughts have progressed on Purple Black Z, or if you just want to see what my old ideas were or whatever, I will post those in the comments section for you to check those out whenever you want. Okay, but this is going to be a deck, you know, theory crafting style video. So I want all the ideas out there so we can take this leader to the next level. Okay, so uh, I'm going to read through the list real quick and then we're going to talk about each card. Four, four of the 10 cost Kuzan, four Borsalino, two of the four cost Kuzan, three Sakazuki, two Toshigi, four Suru, three Isho, three Branu, four Sabo, two seven cost luffy very interesting two gecko moria three t-bones four jack uh this is the ramp jack where you on play you could discard a card to reveal a, uh to a make a dawn card active from your dawn deck uh three zoro juro three of the kamazo card this is 2k counter that can pop you know cards we'll talk about that in a second two shiki and two of the new uh op07 sanji so the first card i want to mention is the first card in the list this is kind of what makes z considered like so potentially powerful not to say that it is because you know it does struggle we know it struggles but if you can somehow get to 10 dawn and drop this card the turn you play this card you're going to pop a five or less from his from this character's effect and then remember what the leader effect does guys you can return four of those dawn cards you've already used to pop a eight or less because three plus five right pop an eight or less KOing it and then you're swinging for six so th this is the whole entire idea behind the early versions of Z. Now I'm going to be taking it, excuse me, I'm going to be taking it in a slightly different direction, guys. I'm just giving you a heads up right now. I'm trying to take this deck in a slightly different direction because guys, I'm just gonna be honest, this is just not practical. It, you just, if you're playing against Red or Purple Law, when they're on their 10 Dawn turn, or excuse me, when you're on your 10 Dawn turn, you know, they go down and up and up and down, up and down, up and down with, with their Dawn. When you get to your 10 Dawn turn, this cannot be your entire play. Like, like it just, I mean, maybe in some cases, I don't know. Y'all help me out in the comment section below if you think otherwise. But if you're dropping this card on turn five, you know, if you went second and everything, you're probably going to have like one or two life, right? At, at most, one or two life. So then they start smashing with their board. And yes, you can pop two, maybe even three of them with the leader effect, plus swinging for the six, plus the plus the Kuzan, but then they're coming in, you know, just, you know, full board, all in on the next turn with, you know, Kid and Killers and whatever that they had left on the board, their leader, and you name it. Okay, because think about it, they're going to easily have a full board by turn five, so if you pop two of those characters, even if you pop three of them, even if you popped three of them, say they had like a, you know, um, I don't know, some card turns sideways and then you pop two cards with the two effects we said and swing six into them with your Z and they have two characters left, they're still just going to run you over. You know what I mean? It comes down to like, and it depends, you know, I'm not saying you can't play out blockers and stuff in the meantime. It's running Sabo, it's running Borsalino, but I think you guys understand what I'm saying. A Sabo and a Borsalino do not stick for long against Red Purple Law. All right, so, so the first thing I want to say is Kuzan. This card, it's almost like a pipe dream. Like, maybe run one or two of them, and then, use, and then you know, if you get to it, you can use it. But otherwise, um, you'll, you'll see the list that I'm running, guys. And keep an open mind. You guys think of, like, ways we can make this list better. And while this card might seem like an absolute no-brainer, I think the format's a little too quick to be running a card like this. We'll have to see. We'll have to see. Four Borsalinos, two Kuzan. This is very standard. The three Sakazukis is nice, because this is like what I'm saying. Excuse me. I don't know who this person is that piloted this deck because obviously it's in Japan. Um, 
but I would not be surprised if they were using Sakazuki to trash one of these Kuzans just to stay in the game. Because remember, guys, this this was OP07. If, if I didn't already mention that, let me show you guys. Look at this. Japanese EB01 uh, and then OP07 starting on February 24th in, in, in this uh, list here. Check this out. We'll go to Z. There it is. This was in April 12th, like we said. So this is OP07. So like I said, I, I don't think this card right here, or excuse me, I don't think this card was getting a lot of play unless it was against yellow. And I will say that against yellow, this card is like excellent. Now they can Rygo go it. We know how that goes, but this is going to allow you to battle against some of the bigger characters they're dropping down. Okay. Good stuff there. Um, now let's move on. Isho is just a very, very strong card in OP07. Enel is drawing a lot of cards, guys. Okay. You need to have some type of way to attack their hand. You need a way to attack their hand. And this also helps your, your leader. And this is the card I'm pushing for. I think this card is just strictly better than Kuzan. Because remember, guys, this is a former Navy card. So you can't search this with brand new. Sorry, guys, you cannot search this with brand new. But Isho, I don't know why it says world government. That's not correct. He is a Navy card. <laughs> do not do not believe what you see right here. Like the world government came in and changed the name of this one. No, this is a Navy card, guys. That is a, that is an absolute uh, mistake right there. And brand new can search up Isho. But think of it like this. I would see this card as an easy turn four play if you're on the draw. Uh, but if you're on the play, if you're going first on, a, on, your, on your five dawn turn, you'll be at nine dawn, right? Because, you know, one, three, five, seven, nine. Well, on that turn, you will be able to drop Isho to give him a Dawn, and now your leader effect, you get two cards out of their hand if they had six or more cards in hand, and now you're popping a six or less, which, yes, that is two under what you're, you know, what you would normally be able to do with, with the 10 cost Kuzan, but this is so much more practical, guys, and it makes so much more sense, at least in my personal opinion, uh, and it's hitting their hand right on play. It just, I really do like this card. And neither of these, I will say this right now, neither of these cards are practical to play against Red Purple Law. Like, these are tr these are cards you pitch. These are cards you search over with brand new against Red Purple Law. You know, because you need other answers to stay in the game. Okay, what else? So, Sakazuki we talked about. You know, Sabo, we know what that does. We don't have to talk about that. We know what Gekko Moria does. Now, Monkey D. Luffy, uh, this card, I don't quite understand why it is in the deck. They have it here for some type of reason, and if you guys can think of the reason, please put it down in the comment section below. I personally am not a fan of this card in this list. Hey, and Dress Rosa, absolutely run this run this card all day, every day. But in this list, I I, I don't see it because I don't even see you filling up your trash fast enough to use this card. I'm gonna be honest. Like, what are, are you just countering out with every single card in your hand and then playing it out because? I mean, yes, it can attack into active characters, so I guess that's nice against certain, like, maybe, I don't know. I don't even know, guys. I don't even know uh, why you'd want to run this card over something else. Uh, even just over, just, like, something, like, let me see. Um, maybe even, like, a Sakazuki would be better there, or another Kuzan, the four-cost Kuzan. I don't, I don't even know, guys. You tell me what you think in the comment section below. Not a fan of this card in the deck. Gekka Moria, we know what that card does. It's so powerful. And Gekka Moria has a very solid, um, another option. It has, it has a lot of options. But this is a very strong option with your leader's effect in, in Z, right? This is a 4-cost, 5,000 power, 2K counter. And I'm surprised they're not running four of these. But it's a 2K counter. And when you return Dawn cards on your field to your Dawn deck, KO up to one of your opponent's characters with a cost of two or less. If... I would literally just play this out as your 4 cost 5k. Like, yes, it's a 2k counter for later in the game when you need it. And by the way, you can get it back very easily with Gekka Morio. So it has all that utility in there. But if you're comboing this with your leader's effect, you're popping a 3 and a 2. Or if you have down an Isho, you're popping a 6 and a 5. Or if you have down a Kuzan, you're popping an 8 and a... Uh, what is it? Actually, the turn you play it would be crazy. If you played this... If you had a uh, Kamazo down, this card right here... Um, Hita Kiri Kamazo. If you have this card down and you play out Kuzan, think about what you do that turn. Pop a five or less with this guy's effect. Attack with your leader to pop an eight or less, and the and then your Kamazo. When you return the dawn, you're popping a seven or less. That would be insane, and that is very strong. But again, guys, how practical is it? Pretty much impossible. You know, it it, it almost feels impossible in the game currently. Not saying it is impossible, but it just feels very it feels very bad. Uh, Zoro, we know this is just the the ramp Zoro, very solid. Jack is a ramp card, and this this deck is not running the. Um, I'm surprised it's it's not running. Um, what's it called? The the Bon Bon Cray Ben Tham. But at the same time, I guess I do understand. Here's the idea, guys. Let me just give you guys the idea. 
the idea is, okay, this card just for sure gives you a dawn. Just period, right? You trash a card from hand, you get to... And, and the, the point is to play this on the play, as in when you go first. When you're on the odd curve, this will get you to your even curve, where you're always hitting your 10 Don Kuzan on turn 5. That is the idea. But again, what happens if you don't get this card? Well, and, and, you know, you're just in trouble for that part, or for the most part. And same idea with this card. It's like, okay, what if this doesn't get to attack? It happens. It does happen. T-Bone, just an incredible 2K counter, searchable by Navy. Uh, Shiki is pretty interesting as well. It's a two cost 1K, uh, 1,000 pow one, 1, power, 1K counter blocker with on play. If you have eight or more Dawn, draw a card and trash card from your hand. Uh, this is actually a great card. I did not play test this one today in, in, in the videos you'll see today, but this is actually a very, very good card, but it's not really searchable by what we're trying to do. Uh, Sanji, this is just a six cost 6K, 2K counter blocker. We know what this does. And it's really nice after you use your leader effect because you're going to go down two or more uh, fewer dawn if they're at ten, right? So that does that does actually help out quite a bit, uh, being able to play him for three. And he's just a good two kick counter. So that's pretty much it, guys. Like I said, this is an OP seven list from the East uh, of Z. So we know the leader has some potential, right? Like I, I understand we don't know how good this was just a store battle. It wasn't even a flagship. We don't know how good the players were in this tournament, but there's something there, right? At least you guys can see what what the concept is they're going for. Okay, so we got that done. Let's go ahead and check out some games on the sim. I do have, um, I have five games lined up for us on the sim. Now, the first one's against Odin. Let me get set up here. But I've got some other ones. I got two games against Luchi, a game against Bonnie, a, a game against Boa. And, um, whoops, let me move that. There we go. And we, we've got some decent games here. Don't worry, guys. So the volume is uh, off, speed is 2x, and we're good to go. So here we go, guys. Uh, this is against Red Green Odin, which, by the way, I think Red Green Odin is not a bad deck at all. Here we go. My mouse is doing that thing again. All right, there we go. I think it's the cord, guys. I'm sorry. The cord, like, gets stuck on something. All right, so so Red Green Odin, I think, is a very good deck, guys. Please do not sleep on this one. This, this leader is actually better than people give it credit for. Now, he accidentally... I've done that before, too, where you're trying to say just use the effect... And then he actually attached a Dawn to it. It's like a mental slip there. But hey, it didn't matter. He got the attack off anyway. It literally didn't matter. And he still got to use the effect. Okay, now I am not going to let him keep this Momonosuke. I'm just going to drop a Brook on him. I will show the deck list at the end of the video. But this first, I think the first list here, I'm using a uh, version uh, that's very much centered around Kid Pirates, Heart Pirates, and Straw Hat Crew. So in other words, we're using the, the one cost event searcher that can search up any of those three types. Okay, and then they drop a Yamato. I don't like that. I'm, I'm I, you know, you know, I'm not a fan of that Yamato. I have to say, guys, I have to say. Now, I really wanted to play that four cost kid here because then I could get a lot of cards out of hand. But do I? Will I even have the ability to do that? Because I, there's a lot of. I, I want to just remove this card, right? Okay, so I'm gonna. I think I'm gonna swing five first because I've already attached the dawn. I can't decide what I want to do, and then I just uh, pass the turn. Right? Did I just pass the turn? Yeah, I just played a leader and passed the turn. I think that might have been an accident, guys. Or no, he was at six life. He was at, sorry, guys. He was at he was at six life that turn. Okay. Or was he? Now, yeah, yeah, he did. He cheated out this card with Hiyori and then and then got to six thousand life. That's why I didn't do that. But I still think I should have played out the four cost. Um, uh, what's his name? Uh, Trafalgar Law. I personally think I should have done that. But having a six K blocker was nice, getting that free one off there. And now I have to block out of this one for two K, no problem, and my turn. Um, he's turned some cards sideways, and now I can start hitting him. But again, I don't understand why I, I didn't play out the um, four cost law in the, in this situation. He has eight cards in hand or seven cards in hand, perfectly. So I'll get I'll get optimal value, right? Because you have to think of it like this, guys. Let me let me pause for a second because we do have to talk about something. When it comes to making your opponent trash cards in hand, if you have, an, let's say you have an Isho in hand and your opponent has um, eight cards in their hand, right? And you drop down Isho where they trash two cards. Well, they still have six cards in hand, right? They probably still have some decent options left in their hand. Well, if you if they have six cards left in their hand and you pop them with an Isho, they go down to four cards. So they have way less options and you might've hit the best card in their hand because there's a higher chance for you to hit it. Well, same idea with, with, um, with what's his name there, Four Cost Law, because he has exactly seven cards in hand. This is the prime opportunity to do it. But the, uh, the, the other logic I was going through was if I establish these useless kids, I can start using my leader's effect. And that's a big deal. That's actually, a, that's actually a very big deal to start using my leader effect. So that's the idea there. Okay, sorry about that, guys. I did want to at least get that, off, get that off my chest, you know, tell you guys what I'm thinking. 
So I'm going to swing five into the um, Yamato. And then I'm going to swing everything into Yamato, right? That's basically how this is going to go. Um, and I kind of I kind of messed up a little bit because I think I should have... No, I, I did have to do it in that order. But I'll have two Dawn left after this because I'm going to use the leader effect. And this, and this is why, like I said, I don't know. It, it hurts not playing out the... Um, not playing out the... Uh, the Trafalgar Law, because they had so many cards in hand. So I swing six at him here, and then if this doesn't go through, I'm probably going to load up on Ka on, on uh, Eustace Kid here. Okay, yeah, because the, the car this card has to go, guys. This is a card you can't play games with. That is a five... For those who are not aware what that what that um, card was, the, uh, the, the Yamato, that is a five-cost, 5,000-power 5, double attacker with Banish. You can't play with that card. It, it has to go. Okay, but we cleared his board out, and we actually made out even with our Dawn because we had two Eustace Kids down. We went down for Dawn, back up to Dawn, and then we'll be back to two more Dawn this turn, you know, for, when we untap. Okay, he gets rid of my Brook. You know, I had to let that go. I didn't I didn't really have an option, but here we go. I, I think I'm going to play out the other um, Eustace Kid here and just load up to attack into this um, into this. Uh, into this Eustace Kid. Sorry, guys. I was like, wait, wait. Did I did I just say Eustace Kid? It's like, wait a minute. We got some Eustace Kid on Eustace Kid violence here, guys. Some absolute um, craziness going on here. So right here, I'm going to swing for eight into the Eustace Kid. Now watch this. I use the leader effect. I don't KO anything, but it gives me three Dawn back because of all of the Eustace Kids I have. And now I'm going to go 10 into them with my uh, other Eustace Kid. This will get a card out of hand for sure. Yep, gives me a Ryuma. That's fine. Now, 10 more into this guy. And my Eustace kids are starting to pay off now. And that was something, like I said, it took a lot of restraint to not play out the Trafalgar Law on turn 2 or 3 or whatever it was. But if I do that, I, I, I lose so much. What was that, guys? Did y'all see that? Something popped on my screen. Sorry about that. Whatever that was, I do apologize. <clears throat> I think I was uh, editing, or I was uh, clicking, when I was recording this game, I had to change what, whatever uh, song I was on. Okay, but swinging eight into six here, I, I really want to save this card. It's it's very important that I save this card, but look at my hand. I have to give him three 1K counters there to save that card. That felt that felt so miserable, guys. It felt so horrible. But okay, I have nine Dawn, so check out what I can do here. I'm going to play out the Esho, not for much value. Unfortunately, I don't get a lot of value here for it. Um... But I'm going to use it, and then I'm going to get three Dawn back, and we're fine. We'll be on 10 Dawn next turn. I pop a Dinjiro. I have three blockers, and I still have one life. So it's not over for me, right? It's, it's just not over for me yet. And I'm going, to go, I'm going to go hard here. I'm going to smash into the Odin here, and I want to put him on lethal next turn. That's my thought process here. I could have swung, like, maybe with one more blocker if I wanted to get greedy, but why would I do that? Okay, because he has a Dinjiro this turn, so he is actually working with, like, 12 Dawn this turn. All right, plays out Zoro. Now he can attack for 9, 10 with Eustace Kid here. Um, I got to let that go. I literally can't counter out of it. No 2K counters in hand. But now I can force an attack into my life so I can draw another card, which is fine. Okay, he, he plays out a Cat Viper. That's a blocker, but, uh, you know, obviously that's not really going to help him right here, right? So I need to get out of one of these. He's going to swing. He's going to swing here for 6, and I want to take the next attack. So I'm going to take this one, okay, go up to seven, and now smash in for eight, and now I can just take this, and I have my whole turn to attack with here, guys. The only thing standing in my way right now is that Cat Viper. That's it. Nothing else is standing in my way, really, uh, realistically. Now, I'm just going to, I have to just return four Dawn here, unfortunately. I have no other way to activate this effect. It, it sucks, but it is what it is. Pop that. I'm swinging eight into six. He has to give me two cards here, minimum. Uh, or the life card. He gives me the life card. Okay, well then we're going everything into you from my Isho. He's going to need 9k. Every card in his hand has to be a 2k counter. And it's not. GG, uh, that was still a very good game. And Red Green Odin is not a bad deck, guys. For those who might be thinking, oh, that was an easy one. <laughs> no, it's not. Uh, that is a very, very solid deck. Okay, so that was the first one. Let me see, where are we? Z. Sorry, guys, I got a little bit lost over here. Okay, there we go. So now the next one is against Red Purple Law. Let me go 2x speed here, guys. All right, and we're playing against Red Purple Law here, like I said. And this is a version where I decided to swap over to pretty much full navy. You guys see what's in my hand right now? I swapped over. This is like an OP07 version of the deck, I believe. And it is pure navy. This guy gets an absolute banger of a start. But he kind of, I think there was probably a better way to play out what he's doing here. 
But hey, and then I also got very fortunate, got an Ice Age off the top. Um, he is gonna he he returned three dawn. Oh, from his from his Black Maria's effect. Two K counter out there. I'm gonna play out Brook. He can have that kid and killer because I'm at three life. I'm not really worried. Uh, swing five. We're gonna. I think. I think I counter out of this one, and then I can just take the next one, or I can counter out of this one too. Actually, yeah, never mind. Yeah, just counter out and just keep my life as high as I possibly can get it. Um, I, I'm running Z in this deck. The purple seven costs from. I think it's from OP05 or something. Someone help me out in the comment section if I'm wrong about that. It, it was either OP05 uh, or six, I think. Uh, but very solid card that can pop a lot of different characters. Okay, now right here, I'm trying to get into this. Um, there we go, and I got it. I'm trying to get into this Kid and Killer. I use my Ice Age to pop the Ein, and now I've got more cards on the board. He's going to bottom deck this Brook, play out another Kid and Killer. The only thing this guy was missing, and it is like the important part of the of the puzzle, he's missing the um, the card draw. This guy did not see the card draw, but he saw all the gas instead. Okay, so I'm swing five. He can't get out of it. There's the uh, Z I was talking about. It pops a 5,000 power character, and it m removes all of their um, abilities for the turn. Okay, so right here, I'm going to try and just... Now it's my turn to just try to go all in here. Sakazuki will be popping that kid, that Eustace kid there. So I'm going to swing six here to try and get him to block with it, because then I can save it for next turn and establish Isho. He doesn't fall for it. I'm going to swing seven. See if he does it. He doesn't fall for it. So then I go ahead and play out the Sakazuki, trashing the Isho, and now it's his turn. And he gives up because the game is over. Uh, all he can do here is play out a blocker and swing as much as he can into my Z, but that doesn't really do anything for him, right? That and and I and actually, let me see. If he was trying to play that out for four, one, two, three, four, so one, two, three. If he swung eight into Z, I would actually just two K counter out, or unless he put everything in and attacked into it to go back four dawn to cheat out something with Trafalgar Law, maybe he could have gone about that way. Because I think there were so so. Hear me out. There were probably. The two best ways he could have played out this turn, and it would have taken everything he had, and I would still be at two life, is if he went like this. If he went five Dawn onto his leader and go ten into Z, right? That would have popped by Z, because I only have one card in hand, right? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Yeah, he has seven Dawn. Five Dawn on leader, ten into Z, play out both Otamas to minus three, minus three, my Sakazuki, and then cheat out Trafalgar Law, bottom decking my Sakazuki, but the next turn, I am going to draw into... I, first of all, I have um, this Drake if I need to play that, if he had something left in hand or, you know... I don't know. I might I might not have played that out, and I might have just gone for face and established this brand new and whatever that whatever that gave me. But the point is, he could have tried to go on a little further there, but it would have probably uh, not been that great for him. I, th I think I could have just finished it either way. But never give up, guys. Keep trying. Keep trying to win even in that situation. All right, next up, we got against Lucci. Rob Lucci here. Uh, played against some pretty decent leaders, guys. Like, this this uh, deck has some potential. I'm not saying it's goaded. I'm not saying it's best deck in format. And I'm not saying my opponents are the best you've ever seen. But they didn't seem bad. I can tell you that much. Like, you know, I would tell you guys if, if I thought someone was, like, kind of struggling with their leader. But, okay, so this guy goes for six. Six into five here. Uh, I just go ahead and take that because I'm not going. I'm not going against a deck with Blitz or Rush or anything. But he does have potential hand trash, like hand discard. Hand destruction, whatever you want to call it. Um, so I do need to be weary of that. Okay, so I'm going to swing in for five here. Okay, and he just gives me a 1K counter. His hand size is going down. I think he should have taken that, to be honest, but I don't know what's in his hand. I play out Rebecca. I get back a 2K counter. Then I play out the um, the Hell Meppo. I'm just trying to fill the board out a little bit to give him some targets to attack into. So that way I can keep developing uh, and not lose all my cards, lose my life here. Okay, he's going to swing it for six. I think this is worth giving a 2k counter for, or the Rebecca, because I do want to play Gecko Moria as soon as I can. Okay, so right here. You know, honestly, in this situation, I, I was going to say, I don't know, what, I don't remember what I do here, but I was going to say, I think I need to swing with everything on the board, to be honest. Yep, smash, smash, and then just, <clears throat> excuse me, and then just uh, swing for seven here. I could play out Helmeppo. Yeah, I was going to say, it looks like I was considering Helmeppo. Uh, yeah, I do. I do end up playing that out afterwards, so that's fine. Very good stuff there. Um, if I could have gotten a Brook this this game, it would have been incredible there. I could have That would have been a very excellent Brook turn where it's like, I wouldn't have been able to swing so many times, but I would have gotten a Brook down to pop the, the Khalifa, and I'm good. So he swung four into three there, and I'm going to 2K counter out of that because I think, I thought he was, okay, hang on. Let me pause real quick and explain my logic. He swung four into three. And I think, I thought he was going to try to wipe my board with a Lucci, with a Rob Lucci, but he must not have one in hand. But okay, so he's going to swing all this into my life. He swings 12 into life here. I don't, I don't know what the logic is on that, 
Uh, but hey, it, he can do what he wants. I pop, I hit him with an Isha right there, swinging for five, and I have a Gekka Moria follow up the next turn coming. So I'm in a very good position this game. And again, I don't know what was in my opponent's hand and why they would not go for. And it looked like they even trashed a. Um, or maybe that was from the leader effect. I'll say it looked like they trashed an eight cost um, uh, Sabo. Okay, so swing five. He's probably going to play Gekka Moria this turn. I, if I had to guess, that's what I th that's what I would do in this situation. I play out my Suru so I can combo that with my Gekka Moria if needed. He does. He plays out that. He's going to be able to pop quite a few things on my board here. He's going to be able to pop my Isho. He's going to be able to pop my Helmepo. That was not. That was a feels bad moment, right? That was a a real feels bad type of moment there. Swing two into three. Let's see if he or swing three into three. <clears throat> Excuse me. Let's see if he gives it to me. He does. And I still could have swung one more with Helmepo, so he had to let that go. He couldn't block out like I did the one turn. Okay, so minus three on Gecko Moria. Check this out, guys. We've got a play here. We've got a play here. We've got an interesting, interesting line of play here. Play out Gecko Moria. Play out uh, Rebecca Helmepo. Re um, Helmepo is going to put Gecko Moria down to three, down to zero. I'm going to put minus one on Rob Lucci, pop the Gecko Moria, swing for six, use leader effect, pop the Rob Lucci with my leader effect, and now I am... My board is complete, right? I've got a full board. I've still got five cards in hand. They're all 2K counters and cost reduction. You know, it feels good. I've still got two life. He has two life. And he's going to play out a, an Isho. He probably thinks that Isho is going to stick. He's He is incorrect, right? He, he is wrong about that one. He's going to swing hard into there. I give him a 2K counter. I have an Ice Age in hand. I can very, very easily pop this card. I'm going to swing five into life. And then I think I'm going to continue. Uh, I might Ice Age first. Okay, yeah, Ice Age first, play out the... I don't even have to use my leader effect, by the way. So I'll play out the T-Bone here and replace... Uh, I'm trying to do a little bit of math. That's why I'm, like, moving my mouse around everywhere. Pop the uh, pop the Isho with T-Bone. I've got another 5K on the board now. I'm swinging in for 6. And now, next turn, I can go back up to 10, up to 10 Dawn. Because remember, guys, the first turn you use your, 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 uh, your leader effect, you're going down to 6 Dawn. So the next turn, you'll be at 8. Well, that was my next turn, and now I'll be back up to 10 on this, on this uh, following turn. And what do you do into this board? This And he doesn't know I have three 2K counters in hand. You know what I mean? So it's, I've got a blocker, three 2K counters, a 9K body on the board, uh, th and a 5K body. Like, this this is looking very bleak for my opponent. Very bleak. Okay, 6 and a 4. I don't like that. I'm going to have to give him the Rebecca there. Unfortunate. He's going to do minus 3, minus 3. So he did minus 1 and 2 from his leader in stage, minus 3 from the Tempest kick. He's going to pull back probably a Rob Lucci and a Hell Mepo, and he's going to pop uh, probably what t-bone uh probably t-bone and my uh gecko moria okay yeah helmepo or he gets my brook okay that's fine wait two oh i'm sorry he couldn't have done the t-bone and the um the gecko he, he didn't have enough cost reduction unless i missed something uh right here i'm just going all in though i'm going nine right here and then i'm going all in here and i'm going to swing for 11 use leader effect pop whatever on the board and swing for 12 gg Okay, good stuff there. That was a lot of fun. Okay, we got one versus Boa, and then we got another one versus um, Rob Lucci. So let me go speed, 2x, volume's off. We're, we're good to go here. All right, whoops, there we go. Now, Boa is a, Boa's a good deck, guys. Um, like, I, I don't, I'm not saying that uh, it's like the best deck, but it's actually a fairly solid deck here because the way it d does removal is it bottom decks your cards. So what that means is like I can't bring them back with my with my Rebecca's and my Gecko Moria's. Now the list we're looking at here, notice what's in my hand. This is an OP08 list. Okay, obviously, right? I mean this, you know, you, you see the, the the Black Maria. Okay, so Boa Hancock or swing swing seven into Boa. And they take it. They're down to three life already. They took my first hit for some reason. I don't really agree with that. That's not the way you're supposed to... With Boa Hancock, for those who are not aware, you should be countering out of literally every single attack that you can. So that way you can keep getting your leader effect turned on when you remove characters. He's going to swing six and do a two-card psycho with Mihawk. I, you, you hate to see it. It is what it is, though. I can't stop it. And I think he swings for six with leader here and uh, plays out two four-cost bodies with uh, Jinbei. Uh, this this was an ideal turn for for uh, for the Rebecca here. Or, excuse me, for not for Rebecca. For, uh, for Boa. Plays out Jinbei, plays out Gekka Moria, and now I've got a lot of uh, catching up to do, right? Like, I'm, I'm very far behind at this point. They have a real board. My board's kind of fake, right? Like, that that uh, Mr. Mr. 2, Bon Cray, Ben Tham is not really, <laughs> not great into what's going on here. So I go ahead and swing five into, into the Mihawk. I'm going to tr try to start getting cards out of my opponent's hand. I knew that was not going to connect, and I'm trying to see what I can even do here. 
Um, Because in my mind, I'm thinking, okay, I'm actually going to have to use my leader effect here. Uh, Leader effect or or, uh, Brook. And I was able to pull off Brook, which was nice. So swing seven into this guy, and he does protect it. He's down to two characters on the board. Um, and, and the nice thing about using Rebecca and using these cards is look what he did. He didn't attack me. You notice that? He attacked into my board, which is the right call, by the way. That is the right call. But if he attacked into me, I would have probably had to let everything through and just hope for next turn to get full dominance, right? You know, there, there becomes, there are plays that like, you know, give your opponent initiative. And then there are plays where you keep the initiative and you keep your opponent on the back foot. And in that, that situation there, they, they tried to keep the initiative by taking out my board. So now I have to, now I have to play from behind and try to catch up to what my opponent's doing. Okay, swing five into four. That was an interesting call there. You know, I'm surprised he didn't use it, attach one dawn to get the effect out. Let's we'll see what they do here. Oh, they needed six dawn for that effect. Very, very strong. Um, and what did they pull back? I'm sorry, guys. Let me go back real quick. Did they pull They pulled back the Kaya. They pushed Kaya back to the deck, and they're going to draw a card from that effect there. Really, really nice. Okay. Uh, great synergy there using Kaya and Boa Hancock. R- really solid. Do I have set two X speed, guys? I'm sorry. Let me, let me just make sure. Yeah, we, we, did, we do. We're good. Okay, but I do have a pretty strong card in my hand, okay? I do have a fairly strong card in my hand, Gecko Moria. I don't have great targets, but watch what we do here. We do have some options. We're going to bring back Black Maria and Suru, minus three to this guy. I'm going to pump my leader, popping, you know, with the leader effect, popping the Mihawk, swinging six into the 5K. He gives me a 2K counter, pass turn. It's my opponent's turn now, but I have a very good board. I have a very good board, and I used Black Maria's effect at the end there to go back up to nine dawn, or whatever. I think I was at eight or nine, whatever my opponent was at, that's what I got back up to. I think they were at eight or nine. So that means I'll be at 10 dawn next turn, no matter what. Black Maria is the card I was going to talk about earlier, guys. I think I, I kind of referenced it a little bit earlier. That card with Z is not that bad, because you're going backwards five dawn, right? Or excuse me, excuse me, four dawn. You're going backwards four dawn with your leader's effect, well, Black Maria says, here's five back, right? And yes, it will it will even out at the end. Okay, they hit me with the Gravity Blade, Raging Tiger. Sorry, guys, got a little distracted. Not an ideal uh, situation for me because he's taking away my targets from the trash. That's what really sucks here. That's what really stinks. I, I, don't, I need these cards. I'm going to swing 10 into 8, see if he gives me two cards or three potentially, right? Now, right here, I'm going to have to play. I, look, these are my only targets in my trash, guys. That's it. I have a Helmet Poe. I have a Bon Cray Bentham, and I have a... a um, whatever the guy's name was, uh, uh, or excuse me, the Rebecca, and, and yeah, that's it. So right here, I'm going to have to just grab, I think I grabbed back the Rebecca, and then I just, you know, there, there's not even a target for me to get back with Rebecca, but at least it's a blocker. Now, let me explain something real quick. I should have, pause, 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 pause. I should have gotten back the Bon Carre Bentham. Why? Number one, I probably can save my, my uh, Gecko Moria from any attack that they try to swing at it with. Because, you know, it would take four dawn to get to nine, and I have one, two, three, four K in, in hand. That's number one. Number two, if he plays out a Kaido this turn, it doesn't matter which Kaido, by the way. If he just plays out a Kaido this turn, Bon Kare Bentham will be able to match its power, and now I can stay on the aggressive, and he can only bounce back one. He can only bounce back one Gecko Moria. You see what I'm saying? If it's the bounce Kaido. If it's not the bounce Kaido, then now look what I have. I'd have a 9K, a 9K, and then a 12K because he played out the, the Kaido. Okay, so I should have grabbed back, and look at this. No Dawn attachment swinging into my Helmeppo. I block with Rebecca so that I can get into my trash for a, for a Gekka Moria later. But now, the game would be over right now. The game would be absolutely over right now if I had brought back my... Um, uh, what's his name? My my Mr. Two. So that was an absolute play mistake, and it all it almost cost me this game, guys. You'll see. Okay, we're swinging nine into five. They're going to have to give me a 2K, 2K, 1K here because I'm not... Well, actually, probably for the next one. The next one's the one I would counter out of. Okay, so let's see what he does. We're going to swing for nine. He does give me a 2K, 2K, 1K. So, and I'm only at eight dawn, guys, because I had to use my leader effect last turn. So I swing for five, and I establish two blockers. But guess what? Gravity Blade, Raging Tiger. Yep, seems good to me. Why, right, that's 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 what I'm now at jeopardy of. And there it is. Now he gets a free hit on my Gecko. Like I said, guys, not doing the correct play from the trash, not getting back that Mister T- Mister Two, nearly cost me everything. It near it nearly cost me everything this game. And this was a very good game. It was a very back and forth game. Okay, my opponent's just trying to do all the math here. They're trying to see, like, okay, if, if I have three 2K counters in hand, which is not unrealistic, but if I had three 2K counters in hand, then he wanted to make sure he got my card. 
Okay, so I'm going to swing nine into five here. He's probably going to counter out of this one because otherwise I have to. Th otherwise, I can put everything on my leader and go all the way in here. So I screwed up again. Sorry, guys. Hang on. Look at this. Look what's in my hand. Look what's in my hand. Let me go backwards. He has six cards in hand, and I screwed up again not playing Isho out first. I should have just done that, period, because I'm not at jeopardy of losing this game. Right? Y'all see what I'm saying? Let me hit play again. I'm not at jeopardy of losing this game next turn. They're not running rush cards in, uh, in Boa Hancock. And look at that. He had to get rid of just straight up 1Ks to get out of that 9K attack. It was like a 2K and 3 1Ks to get out of that. So now I at least take out his character there. But now he can do the same thing and take out my character, right? It was just an absolute play mistake. And it would have also established my, my Isho for this turn. Blah, blah, blah. It was just, I, again, I just, I was so frustrated after I did that. Okay, and now he plays out this card, which I can get around very easily with my leader effect. I'm going to swing for seven at him. I'm going to return four dawn to pop this um, this uh, Do Flamingo, And then I'm going to swing for um, what, what's left, eight. With uh, Actually, I don't even have to anymore. Now, now, instead of attacking, I'll just establish a body here and, and you know, win the right way. I play out Zoro and pass. Okay, now there's nothing they can do. Nothing. So nothing can save my opponent now. Uh, I'm going to counter out of this because why wouldn't I? You know, the Kaido can't do it either, even with whatever cards he just drew, because now I just I just swing all sevens. So three, so it's going to be seven, 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 I believe. Yeah, because I got a Dawn back with my uh, activation there. That was two cards out of hand. So now if this doesn't go through, I am going to start sweating, because <laughs> then I pretty much lose, right? All right, here we go. Swing seven. Oh, and then, then he quit out too fast. So he quit out a little too fast for me to stop him. Let me see, right, if I can get it. Hang on. Let me pause. Or, yeah, play. And then I'm going to pa pause it right when he, uh, let me, let's see if we can get it. I'm not good at this. Oh, okay. I couldn't get it. Whatever the case is, guys, he was not able to get out of it. GG. That was a very close game. But it shouldn't have been close. That game, that game should not have been close. All right. And then we got one more Lucha game, guys. We got one more Lucha game. I mean, and y'all be honest, guys, like, and, you know, y'all can say something in the comment section below. By all means, please comment. You guys know I love when y'all comment on the video. Does this deck seem viable to y'all? Like, I mean, I, I don't think it's that bad, especially with the new purple cards, cards like Bon Cray Bentham, cards like um, uh, Black Maria. I think this this leader is not, like, unplayable. And this is, so this will be against two Luchis, a Boa, um, and, what, let me put my glasses on, I can see over here, um, Odin, and a Law, Red Purple Law. So, like, pretty decent uh, matchups here. Okay, so, um, and I know they weren't the best matchups. I can hear people saying it right now, like, oh, those guys weren't good, or, you know, that was, or not the best matchups, but not the best uh, players or something like that. Not the best examples, but y'all know what I mean, guys. Okay, so, I'm sorry, I got to get caught up. So, I swing into the uh, Spandam. I just want to get some value from my Mr. Two, because it will not get value. He's going to pop it this turn. I have no way to stop him, right? Uh, or so I thought. So I thought I'd have no way to stop him. Maybe he didn't have anything in hand to use. But whatever the case is, I'm at 9 Dawn this turn. So I think I'm just going to play out a tempo version of... Um, of What's his name here? Play out a tempo version of Gecko Moria. Getting my Bond Cray back. Minus 2. Use my leader effect. Pop the card on the board. I've got a blocker now. And whatever he KOs, I can play out another Gecko, Mo Gecko Moria next turn. Because I'll be on 10 Dawn. Because remember, I was on 9 Dawn. Got back the Mr. 2 to go up to 10 Dawn. And then now I can do that. Okay, so he plays out an Isho. That card is very dangerous. I need to swing first with my um, with my Mr. Two to get the value from it. Now I can try to take out this card on the board. So swing nine, swing nine. That's a pretty good start to this game, right, guys? That's a pretty decent start here. So he's at eight. This will put him at five. This will put him at three. And now I'm going to play out Black Maria. I'm going to swing for eight at life, seven, and then, you know, plus one for the effect, eight. Pop his Isho. He's going to have to give me two uh, 2K counters there. I use my Black Maria in a turn. I'm back up to eight Dawn. <laughs> seems good, right? S seems seems pretty good. I use my blocker there, so I have, a, I have another target hit with my uh, Gecko Moria. And, guys, you know, what, you know what this deck does. You know what Luchi does. It just pops everything. Okay? Uh, he should have popped Black Maria, in my personal opinion, but who knows? Maybe he has other plans in mind. I'm going to swing for uh, five here. I think I'm going to swing for five more here. Or do I, I, hang on, I think I choose to use the leader effect. I can't remember. I'm trying to see what I can pull back and what all I can do this turn with my, um, with my Gecko Moria. Okay, so uh, yeah, I need to play that out first. Pull back that guy, because he's a nuisance, man. That card's an absolute nuisance. Now, I can't uh, KO his character this turn. Or, well, I can KO the Helmet, but I can't, I can't KO the, um, the Sabo. 
but that's okay. We'll go back up to 10 Dawn with this effect here. Like I said, guys, Black Maria with Z is a very, very nice effect, guys. That is a very nice uh, synergy there. Because now my leader effect is free. My, my leader effect is essentially free now. Especially now that my opponent's on 10 Dawn. Okay, he's got four cards in hand. I'm at four life. He's at one. He does have to do something here. He has to get rid of these two cards. He has to get rid of the Gekka Moria. And he has to get rid of my four cost. Um, what's his name? Uh, bon Kure Bim Bam. Mr. Mr. Two. But it looks like he can't. It looks like he might not be able to do that. Let's see what he does here. Looks like he's going to get back a Spandam and then uh, or, or Spandine, and then that's going to get back Luchi, and that's going to be able to pop my uh, my Gecko and my Suru. Not bad, but also not incredible, right? Okay, I don't have any cost reducers in my hand. My opponent is very fortunate that I have no cost reducers in hand. If I had a uh, Suru right now, I would be popping that uh, that whatever her name is, the Rebecca, and we'd be off to the races. I'm going to swing nine here. See what he does. He has to give me Rebecca, right? Or, or I, I guess he could take his last life and chance me not having removal. You know, there there are options here. There are a few different options here. He does give me the blocker. I think that's the safe bet. But it's like, you know what? Why don't I just swing with Black Maria? <laughs> Watch this, guys. All right, so attach six, it looks like. Seven. So we're going to swing for ten, uh, nine. I can't do math. Swing for nine with Black Maria. And then we'll just go ahead and swing for nine as well with um, Z. Popping his um, his Helmepo. And he had it. Not, no problem. But then, so he gave up as soon as he drew his first card. Because what he had determined was, if I don't get a blocker, like if he, if he does not get a blocker, okay, he, he literally can only do four attacks this turn. I have four life. He could wipe my whole board and not swing with anything, but if he doesn't have a blocker, I load up 15 and I go face. Right, and that's that's where the real issue was. All right, good game there. Very fun. Well, guys, that's it for the games on The Sim. Let's go ahead and check out the deck lists now. So the first list I want to show you guys is kind of the first draft I was working with for OP06.5, I believe. Yeah, I believe this was OP06.5. Notice there is no OP07 cards in here. I don't believe there is. Let me see. Other than Sanji, excuse me, Sanji being the only one, but you could replace this with whatever 2K counter you want to. But this is going to be legal. Actually, this this deck will basically be legal on Friday, right? Or I guess technically the following Friday for us in the West. Uh, but notice what we're doing here. It's all about when you're at sea, you fight pirates. It's all about having the Heart Pirates, Straw Hat Crew, and Kid Pirates crews uh, together. Because all of these cards are searchable by that or, or, excuse me, by this event, except Isho and Kuzan. So only six cards. That's, you know, yes, it is only a top three searcher, but guys, you can hit literally every single one of these cards, guys. Y'all see that? Every single one of these cards you can hit with um, with this event outside of the six, I said, the four Ishos and the two Kuzans. And this is when I started noticing, like, you know what, Kuzan, as, as cool as the card is, Kuzan is insanely awesome. Like, uh, sorry, this card right here. This card is just epic. I love this card. But... It just doesn't, it's just hard to pull off, guys. I don't know how else to say it. I wish it was better than it was. I have nothing against this card. It's one of my favorite cards. Um, but it just doesn't work. It, you, it just, I feel like you just can't get the value you need from it or you're getting run over. Okay, and so I still run two of them just in case. Like like I said, if you're playing against like a green or a yellow deck, okay, this now this card's insane, right? But but yeah, until then, you're kind of struggling. And the same, same idea with this card, like this uh, Hitakiri Kamazo card, in practice, or excuse me, in theory, on paper, it seems so good. But what deck is going to let you just stick this card? Luchi's going to pop this card. Red Purple Law is going to pop this card. You know what I mean? Bo is going to pop this card. So, like, if the card does not give immediate value, I started I started going away from it. And that was, like, my, my natural progression. Now, the next deck I want to show you guys is the Navy version of the list. This is where I'm trending towards for op07 and honestly there's not even any op07 cards in here guys like notice like so this card uh, zephyr was from op06 remember i was asking earlier this is from op06 guys nothing in here is from op07 not one card uh this is from all the way back in op01 and this is a navy searchable card by the way guys x drake is a navy searchable card and in this in this deck even by the so is zephyr zephyr is also navy searchable i can search up every single card in this deck with, a, with brand new, except Gecko and Brooke. Gecko, Brooke, and, and Rebecca, obviously. Obviously Rebecca. But this version seemed okay. I believe this was in the, the middle two games, like the game three and four. Or, or no, I think this was games two and three. 
and the first deck we just looked at on the sim here was games one or was game one and this was games two and three and this these next two games and, and the final the last two games we looked at is from this list right here this is the the where i'm trending for op08 with this kind of deck list and i want to know what you guys think especially for op07 because that's what we're about to go into but is there something for op08 that i might have missed and just to give you guys a heads up yes i did look for both of both of these big cards right here i checked out charlotte linlin it did not go well for me and i checked out kaido it did not go well for me because i'm already trying to do too much with what this leader effect is i just need ways to complement my leader effect that's where isho is so good because it drops the cost of everything by three you know that's where like these ice ages are so good uh that's where helmepo and suru are so good they're dropping the cost uh of my opponent's characters uh but but i will say i think i can do there's definitely more exploring to be done because maybe we do take the deck in an animal pirates uh, animal kingdom pirates direction okay that that is an option that is an option going forward and i want to know what y'all think about that um, I wouldn't say CP is really an option because that's just all built around the, the you know, Spandam and, and cards like that. But Spandam is leader locked. It says if your leader has CP in its types, you can do his effect. I don't know why. That's just how they decided to do it. You know, Brand New is not leader locked. Where's, well, Brand New is not in this list because there's not, there's not enough Navy. There's almost enough Navy to run Brand New in this list, actually, for those who want to try it. But I did want to run some ramp in this deck, especially for turns where I, or for games where I have to go first. Zoro's the best option there, and maybe Jack. Like, let me uh, bring back Jack. Hang on. Bring back Jack. We're rhyming tonight, today. Okay, Jack. Purple. Um, not this one. This one. Uh, it's a 3 cost, 4,000 power, 1k counter card, but you have to trash a card in order to add one card from your Dawn deck and set it as active. However, that's also not the worst thing in the world, right? Trashing a card, because we know we can get value from it later with Gecko Moria or Rebecca, or both right and there are there are very solid cards to trash that you that you want in your trash for later turns with gecko moria uh, i'm running the who's who uh, the who's who uh 2k counter the new one from op08 this card is this is probably one of the best one of the best 2k counters you're going to get in black and t-bone as well these are both look at this guys t-bone and who's who are five cost 5,000 power 2k counters so they are bodies you can actually play and look what their effects are guys on play now, you do have to trash a card with, with a who's who, but it, it KOs a, a three or lower. And then T-Bone KOs a two or lower. So that's actually very good for your early game stuff. Instead of having to waste your Dawn on your leader effect early on, why not just waste, quote-unquote, waste a 2K counter by using out your T-Bone or your who's who to pop one of their characters? And on, remember, on top of that, you're establish, establishing a 5K body, a body that can swing into your opponent next turn if, or, or is going to force removal. So uh, this is the direction I'm, I'm trending towards. Brooke, I can't get enough of this card, guys. I, I just feel like, I feel like every game that I have Brooke in my hand is now a winnable game. Now, I'm not saying I win every game with Brooke. I'm not saying that. But I'm saying if I have Brooke in my hand, I know I have a chance. Because I know that I'm going to be able to get some type of value from this card. Whether I combo it with an Helmepo, an Ice Age, or a Suru, I'm going to be able to pop at least something what I need. And then they have to use removal on this card and now my other cards are going to be that much stronger right that's going to be one less removal card to use on my geckos or my ishos so uh yeah uh but yeah that's about it guys uh the list is running very well um i, I do th it, it surprised me it ran better than i thought it would just being completely on honest with you guys this list ran very very well um i'm not saying it's s tier or anything like that but i think um it might this list right here is, is especially the op08 version with the black marias you got the gecko isho action that this double eight cost action uh going on here uh and then you got the you got all the blockers you need in borsalino and, and rebecca there's there's definitely room for improvement maybe maybe we need to try to fit in something like um what's his name uh, uh sabo maybe we try to fit in like one or two sabos in the place of a borsalino and a and a uh a bond a bond clay or something i don't know we'll have to find uh, room for it because I am running a lot of 2k counters in this list, guys. Notice how many 2k counters I'm running. Four Who's Who, four Suru, four T-Bone, four Black Maria. That is 16 2k counters. And there are very few bricks in this list. You notice that? Other than Gecko, Moria, and Isho, that's it. Right? Did I, did I do that correctly? Yeah, sorry. That is literally it. So 10 cards, actually, if you count the Ice Ages. Ice Age is obviously there for... for it's there for a specific reason. Um, and, and that is one thing, uh, one thing I want to mention, too. Going forward with the, with this list, I think I might consider dropping down one Isho going up one Ice Age. Because having 10 or less bricks is 
pretty much fine. I feel like I feel like every deck has somewhere between five to even twelve, maybe even fifteen bricks is like on the upper end of that. But ten is like a nice midway point because you're gonna run for Gecko Moria. You're gonna do it, right? I mean, if you're running a black deck, why would you not do it? Uh, you know, or, or even Kuzon, right? That's kind of like four Gecko, four Kuzon. You know, that's and I know this is issue. I'm saying you're gonna have anywhere from eight to twelve uh, bricks in your deck, I think, on average. But honestly, guys, this one only has 10, and look at what they are. It's Like we said, it's Gecko Moria, and it's Isho. Not not exactly the worst worst possibility there. The Black Maria adds so, so much to the leader effect, guys. Make sure y'all read that and understand how powerful that is. It is completely catching you back up uh, with your Dawn. Um, yeah, what else? I think that's that's about it, guys. That's about it. I, I just want to rush. Like, I'm using Zoro, and I'm using um, Bon Carre here just to ramp as fast as I can. Uh, to get to around 8 to 10 Dawn, so that way I can start dropping my big boys and start using my leader effect. That, that's the whole purpose of this deck. And it seems like it's going pretty decently. Like I said, my matchup into Luchi feels pretty much 50-50. Uh, and maybe that has a lot to do with, like, newness, right? Like, a lot of, like, the Luchi players, I'm not, you know, again, I tried to uh, say that earlier, but I was so clumsy stumbling over my, my uh, words. I understand I'm not playing against the best players. I get it, guys. I understand these aren't the best representations of every single deck out there. But this was this is also not a perfected list of Purple Black Z, right? This is just my first day playing it in probably, <laughs> I think, like uh, three to five months, right? Uh, and I, I, I will post the videos in the comment section below of my older Z videos. I think I mentioned that earlier. Okay, that's enough rambling. That's enough of that, guys. Uh, y'all tell me what y'all think in the comment section below. Now we're going to check out the art critique. We got to check out some art and we got to, you know, since we're on purple, since we're already in, in that spirit, right? Or in that mood or whatever that, that, um, that mood, here we go. We got to check out this Trafalgar law. Now I'm not going to, I don't like to talk a lot about balance in these. It's more about the art critique, but I do want to mention one thing. I have to mention red purple laws effect real quick. Imagine, okay. This character was like basically built for red purple law. Because it's, it's a three-cost Trafalgar Law Searcher for Heart Pirates uh, characters. Can you imagine how much better, not better, how much more fair it would be if Red Purple Law could only cheat out Heart Pirates characters? I was thinking about that. I'm always, and I, I think someone might have even mentioned that, but I'm just uh, re restating it. Because then there'd be like at least some reason to play a card like this. This card, look at this art, by the way, guys. We're, we're about to go into the art part of it. But if... It, you know, we, we, we always have to at least talk about Red Purple Law a little bit, considering its place in the current format. And I, I wish they would have done something like that. Okay, now, on to the art part here. Sorry, guys, I did have to do a quick little aside there. Okay, so right away, uh, this... One thing I want to mention right away is the texturing. Look at the texturing on this masterpiece, okay? This is Akira Igawa, uh, one of their pieces. Uh, in, incredibly talented artist. You know, all of them are, by the way. I'm sorry, I don't mean that in a disrespectful way to the previous artists. All of these artists are extremely talented that we're seeing. Uh, but but Akira Igawa, I, I think, is like a, a bigger name than a lot of them. You know, it's, it's you know, there, there's a lot of big name artists in here, but I think you guys know what I'm saying. Um, one thing I want to talk about real quick. We almost have like a Seraphim look with this. Like, notice what's going on. A Seraphim, by the way, for those who are not aware, I believe it's a six-winged angel. Uh, notice the, where, where's my marker tool? Here we go. Notice what's going on with the, the, the uh, well, I don't know what this is, the robe or the cloak or whatever uh, Law is wearing here. Again, I'm sorry, guys. I don't know what he's wearing. Maybe this is a kimono or something that's just attached at the neck. But look at this, guys. We got like one wing going out this way. We've got one wing going out this way. We've got one wing back here, one over here, one down here, and then one all the way back here right behind if you can't see it. So I don't know if they were going for like a nine-tailed style of like, you know, like this this nine-tailed beast kind of thing. Let me get this out of here. Um, you know, but whatever the idea is, it just looks incredible. Like I get a feeling of, of for me, the first thing that goes into my, into my mind is almost like angels, like I said, like a six-winged seraphim angel with with the with the cloak right with with the, with the cloak right here, right? That's that's kind of what's going through my head. But who knows? Maybe um, if you count, you know, if we could see the original picture on these, I need to start looking for those before I do this. But uh, if we could see the full thing, maybe there are nine points on here. Let me see: one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. 
and I think there is nine. And I don't know if that was intentional, but that there might be something there with the nine-tailed beast. That's a big part of Japanese lore. I don't know if it's like the Kitsune or something like that. Y'all help me out in the comment section below. Really, really amazing composition because of that. And now also, let's not, you know, let's not um, miss on the, let me, let me just draw for these. Um, let's not miss out on the composition going here. Look at the, the wind right here that I just covered over. See, the, see this wind pattern right here? Notice what's going on. Oops, I just went in the background. Uh, right here and right here. Notice it's it's basically making a let me back out a little bit. It's making this kind of shape, right? It's making like this o this oval style shape, bringing a lot of motion to the piece. Okay, it kind of it looks like it might actually go through the middle part here as well. It, it's it's adding that if you can't see it. Let me move this. Yeah, it looks like it actually goes more like this. This is kind of what I see for for the uh, for part of the composition. So again, we have like this nine tail beast type of look with what's going on with the kimono, um, you know cape or whatever he is wearing i apologize again guys i don't know what it's called uh and, and on top of that like i was saying earlier before i got completely distracted look at the texturing i mean this is immaculate right the, the work that's going on here i'm sorry it says sample really huge in the front there guys but you know these are the best um quality images i can find on these by just looking on the website but again when i'm saying texture a lot of us think like oh like texture like you know for your shirt or for your hair or for your skin Yes, I'm talking about that. I'm not just talking about the fabric, though. I'm talking about, there's something, I believe it's called Sfumato, where it's, uh, let me look it up while we're actually talking about it. It's S-F-U-M-A-T-O. It's, it's a word. Well, no, that's more about the shading. There, there's, a, there's a technique that I cannot remember. Um, it's not chiaroscuro, because I think that Sfumato and chiaroscuro are the same. I can't remember, guys. I'll try to put it in the comment section below if I, if I find it, if I remember. But like where you where you literally um, leave extra paint on the canvas where it clumps and it has an actual three dimensional texture to it and that's the feeling that this piece has where it looks like if this is a painting it feels like or it looks like you could just literally like like rub your hand across it and you could feel the ridges of how the paint is on this um, but just absolutely incredible I love the scratchiness of it I, I love how raw the talent is on this artist it is on full display here. There's something going on in the background here where it looks like a jar has been kicked up. Uh, someone someone fill me in on what's going on there, or maybe that's just a random piece in the background. I see the buildings down here. The, 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 the background is excellent in this one. Sometimes on these cards, because it's such a small piece, I feel like the artist will uh, kind of leave out the background or they'll compromise the background a little bit, but not in this one. It just looks incredible here. So background, we have the, the actual, the, like I said, we've, we've got the jar flying in the air. We've got the rooftop of some building. We've got something else down here, like maybe a fence or another rooftop. In the middle ground, we have Law, where he's fully stretched out. His hand is coming at us like this. You know, the, the, the foreshortening is incredible. And, you know, the sword's back. He's ready to slice. He's ready to attack. And, and that is, you know, that is the foreground, is the hand pushing in at us. Okay, really awesome piece. Love this piece. The colors incredible it goes together very well lots of light purples and blues and then a, and then like this real like how could i explain the skin tone like it, it's got a the shadows are not overdone in fact the shadows are almost underdone so we can see more details on the face because you would expect this area right here at least i would you would expect this area right here to be very very dark almost like this where, where, it, where it cuts off a lot of the details let me uh, bring back up the picture yes yeah, so, there we go yeah you, you'd expect that here, but they actually leave it a little bit lighter so we can see these eyes. And these eyes have that little ring, you know, going on right here, uh, where they, I think it's when they're, when they're entering into like um, a type of um, hockey, some type like Conqueror's Hockey or something like that. I'm not exactly sure. Uh, some, some type of special mode, though, I noticed in One Piece, whenever the characters are in their, you know, when they're, when they're in try hard mode, when it's like, okay, everything's on the line, they get like, their, their eyes are no longer like a black dot like this. Like, let me just, like, it's no longer just like a black dot like this. It becomes this little, um, like, black ring instead. Uh, for, for, where, for where the iris is and the pupil disappears. Really cool, really cool stuff there. Great color, great composition, incredible piece here. Um, again, just the realism, it's it's real enough to be um, like interesting for the texture aspect of it, but then it's still anime enough to where we know everything going on. It all makes sense to the people who know the content or who know, you know, who know about this um, subject matter. Awesome stuff. Okay, done rambling. That's that. If you have any comments, questions, suggestions, please put them down in the comment section below. And like I said, I will try to look at that technique. I can't remember what it's called. It might not even have a technical name, but where it's just very, very um, like textured, built up paint on the canvas. Okay. Uh, what, what else? 
That's right. Okay, last last but not least here, guys. Big shout out to the people who support me. Uh, thank you guys for making it this far in the video. If you have, uh, big shout out to who I'm calling the VV Pirates Play Mat supporters here. We got some more people on the list. I still have plenty of mats for those who are interested. Take your time. You don't have to order them right away. I've still got about 70 mats or so. So, you know, no no rush on that whatsoever. Uh, but big shout out to every single person on here. Got, got, got a few more names. And then same thing with the patron page. Thank you guys so much to VV Pirates patron page. You know, the, the triple P alliteration at the end there. You love to see it. Uh, thank you guys so much for everyone who supports the channel. Um, thank you. And I just want to say thank you to everyone who just watches, likes, subscribes, shares, all of that stuff, guys. I really do. It helps me out big time. It helps me out more than you know. So thank you guys so much. Uh, please do not forget to like and subscribe if you have not already. And if you have any comments, questions, or suggestions, put them in the comment section below. Until next time, guys. Peace.